Welcome back to the Ovens Garage. Today we're going to be replacing the transmission lines on this 1993 Dodge W250. The hard line sprung a leak and I've decided to replace them entirely with a stainless steel braided line and just scrap those old steel lines. All right, so I'm just going to briefly explain all of the parts and fittings here for replacing the transmission lines. We've got all these parts from Evil Energy. They have a range and variety of fittings and hoses for to suit all of your needs for automotive application. Just explaining briefly how the transmission lines are set up. Essentially there's two lines that come out of the transmission. There's two lines that go into a fluid to fluid heat exchanger on the passenger side of the engine. And then there's also two lines that run up to the air to fluid heat exchanger at the front of the truck. So the two lines that come out of the transmission, they're both 3 8 NPT female. And then on this back line, I'm gonna go into a 10 AN fitting. And all the lines, the, the hose that I'm using is 10 AN. It's a PTFE on the inside, wrapped with stainless steel braided wire, and then it's nylon braided on the outside. So these are all 10 AN fittings, and then the 10 AN PTFE hose. So it comes out, goes into a 90 10 AN, this will run to one of these, which has a 10 AN straight adapter on the other side. And then I'm just, what I'm going to be doing is going into the factory uh, rubber hoses um, that run up to the heat exchanger at the front of the truck. So I just got these half inch inside diameter um, hose barb ends that goes a half inch inside diameter to 8 AN and then these 8 AN to 10 AN adapters. And then it goes into these straight fittings for the hose. So that covers the front of the truck by the fluid to air heat exchanger. And then on this side, <clears throat> this is the feed that runs out to the fluid to fluid heat exchanger. So again, three eighths female out of the transmission into a 90, 10 AN. And then there's a sensor, the factory sensor, which I'll show you on the uh, bottom of the transmission and the uh, Evil Energy makes these straight adapters where it's 10 AN to 10 AN, and then it has a port for an eighth inch MPT uh, fitting or sensor. So the stock sensor is 3 8 three eighths MPT. So I've got this brass fitting that goes from eighth inch MPT to 3 8 MPT female. And then I'm also gonna run another one because my current uh, transmission temperature sensor is on the passenger side and it's better to run it in the hot outline of the transmission. So that's a eighth inch MPT sensor. So I'm just going to put it in there and then I go into the 90 degree 10 AN and then uh, run the hose from it up to this side. And then the fluid to fluid heat exchanger has coming out of it is three eighths MPT female ports. So I'm going from three eighths MPT here to 10 AN and then into these 10 AN hose ends. As well, also have these um, line separators. So I'm gonna use those at certain points, um, routing the hoses just to keep them separated. And then I have these hose clamps to uh, attach to the hose to somewhere at a fixed point. So nothing's rubbing against it and it's uh, kept up out of the way from getting damaged. The next thing we're gonna do is remove these steel transmission lines. There's two that go directly into the transmission. There's the rear one and the forward one here has a sensor in it. So we'll remove them right off the transmission. And there's a number of, there's a couple of brackets up on the bottom of the oil pan that attach them um, to the bottom of the pan. On this side, on the passenger side of the engine, there's two steel lines that go up to the fluid to fluid heat exchanger. That will remove those as well. And the final connections are at the front here. Those two steel lines go into these two rubber hoses um, just up by the front of the oil pan and we'll take those out and then we'll be able to drop uh, both the steel transmission lines. There's actually three lines. Um, these two go up to front, two to the fluid exchanger. One goes from the fluid exchanger to the transmission and then uh, they go up to the front here. So since we have the adapter plate still off with the transmission out, um, I'm putting in these 3 8 MPT male to 10 AN fittings that go into the bottom of the fluid to fluid heat exchanger. 
I just took the factory uh, brass fittings out and put those two in there. Reminder that this, these fittings are all aluminum, so don't go too tight with them. Put some thread sealant on the NPT side to form a seal. So we, we made a diagram for all of the fittings and the fluid flow on the lines between the transmission, the fluid to fluid heat exchanger, the fluid to air exchanger at the front. So keep in mind with the, the fluid to air heat exchanger up here, we're keeping these stock rubber hoses intact and the ends of the lines that we're making are mimicking the ends of the steel lines that go into the half inch inside diameter hoses that are stock. You could go all the way up to the front of the fluid to air heat exchanger and replace those with your own lines as well if you really wanted to, but we're just, uh, we're ending it here. So you can pause the video here and take note of everything um, described in this diagram before you make an order for your fittings. But again, we're going out of the transmission hot through some fittings, one for the stock transmission temperature sensor. And then I have another fitting for my own transmission temperature sensor, it goes out in through the fluid to fluid heat exchanger, back out through the fluid to air heat exchanger, and then back out of it, and then back into the transmission uh, after it's all been cooled. So here's a visual with the fittings themselves. Um, keep in mind, uh, this fitting up here is just a, a visual. I've already put both of these fittings on the heat exchanger on the truck. These are 3 8 MPT mail to 10 AN. So again, out of the transmission hot, into a 90 degrees. This is 3 8 MPT male to 10 AN. We go, I'm going through uh, two 10 AN uh, straight through adapters that have a, a gauge port takeoff. That's eighth inch MPT. One for the stock sensor, which you'll need to go from eighth inch MPT to 3 8 MPT female for the stock transmission temperature sensor. And then I've got another one that I'm gonna put my aftermarket eighth inch MPT uh, male um, sensor in and then I go 90 degrees into 10 a.m. hose end come uh, into one side of the fluid to fluid heat exchanger goes through it and then runs up to the one one of these which is the fluid to air exchanger and then back into the transmission so there's the visual of all the fittings and then these are just to separate the hoses and keep them from rubbing against each other so here's a visual of the sensors. Here's the stock sensor, 3 8 MPT male. And then here is the aftermarket transmission sensor I'm using. That's 8 inch MPT. It's just a little long, so that's why I have this adapter here. But it's this is just an 8 inch MPT sort of spacer. So stock sensor, aftermarket transmission temperature sensor. So the stock sensor measures the transmission temperature coming out of the hotline on the transmission. And it, what it does is it controls whether or not your truck can go into overdrive. So if your transmission's too hot, it won't allow your truck to go into overdrive. And then this aftermarket sensor is just gonna tell me the temperature of the transmission on my aftermarket gauge in, in the truck. So a slight correction on this diagram. I was under the assumption uh, when I measured that this was actually an NPT fitting, but the stock steel lines that go in and out of the transmission have flare fittings. So the brass flare fitting that's on there, this is the stock fitting that comes out of the transmission, is quarter inch NPT male into the transmission, and then it has this flare female fitting for the steel lines. So we actually needed, needed to go and pick up some brass fittings. This is quarter inch NPT male to 3 8 NPT female. So this diagram is still correct, you just need to make sure that you buy these two fittings to adapt to your, um, to this NPT to AN fitting. So here on the transmission, you can see this is where that fitting went for a quarter inch NPT to this flare uh, brass fitting. So this is the one that I'm talking about that you need to replace. So that's the rear one. And then the forward one is just up here. So we're re replacing those two fittings with a quarter inch NPT male to three eighths NPT female brass fittings. All right, so we have the, the fittings mocked up dry right now. You can see here's the front one with both sensors in there. And we have the fittings mocked up on the fluid to fluid coupler. So now we just need to measure the length um, from the, the back of this fitting. We're gonna go from the back on the fluid to fluid to the front on the transmission. We're just using a strap to give us the rough, rough measurement from where the hose would be down um, under the inspection plate and then to that fitting. 
and we're roughly going to do this length, so that's how we're measuring. So we'll go out, we'll pull this fitting off and this 90 off and do our connections on the workbench and then we'll be able to come back and install it on the transmission. So I'm just going to explain how to do these hose, hose end fittings for PTFE. So this is the PTFE hose end. In order to cut this hose, we're just using a hacksaw. So this is a three layer hose that has the PTFE in the middle the steel braided line outside of it and then the nylon braided on the outside of it so the hacksaw gets through it and it kind of peels it back a little bit which what, that's what we need to do anyways in order to get the uh, flare on here so i'll take this fitting apart and show you what we need to do next so here's our ptfe hose end we take this portion of the fitting off and we want it to come on here so we can put that on from the other end after but you have this piece inside of it and it, it has, a, it has a, a little lip on the inside of it. You just push it on the end and ensure that it's seated until you hit that lip. Just like that. Make sure it's seated all the way. You can see that. And then once that's done, you push this portion of the fitting into the PTFE and then you come from the other side and just screw on the rest of the fitting. Okay now we push the fitting over and thread it on then we'll get two adjustable wrenches one for here and one for here and we'll thread this on until it's tight. Now you can see here this is our finished hose product with a PTFE hose end on each end. And here's a final look at the transmission lines from the front side. So you can see both elbows that go with the hose barbs into the factory hose, hoses there. Then you've got these fittings that come into the 10AN hose. We've used these separators. Uh, these are 8AN hose separators for the 10AN line and then brought it back. And I've used a rubber hose, ins or rubber insulated hose clamps to uh, bolt up to the factory studs on the bottom of the oil pan. There's one here and then there's one behind the cross member. So you can see those lines come back. We've got a couple more separators, another hose clamp on the oil pan, and then they come back. You can see the lines from this angle. There's two lines that come across just behind the inspection plate with a couple more separators, and I've got two more insulated hose clamps on the uh, inspection plate of the transmission bolts, or inspection plate bolts. And from the driver's side of the transmission, you can see what the final install looks, looks like for these hoses. Comes out, does the 90 on the rear port, goes right to the front of the truck, and then this other one comes out, does a 90, goes into the factory sensor, and then my sensor does another 90, goes across the bell hosing, then I'll show you up on the passenger side. And this is from the passenger side. You can see the separator clamps as well as the hose clamps holding it into position. So this is very stable and keeps it off of the exhaust. You've got about two fingers between the hoses and the exhaust. And then you can see it goes right up to the bottom of the fluid to fluid heat exchanger. And here's one final look at the whole system again. And here's a look at the system again from the driver's side of the transmission. So at this point with the transmission lines, the last thing we need to do is refill the uh, transmission fluid. Uh, we want to check the transmission while it's hot, idling, and neutral. So we need to get the truck up to temperature and uh, run the fluid through all the lines and system and get it nice and hot and check the fluid level in neutral to make sure it's at the correct level. This is the transmission fluid that I'm running. It's synthetic. Uh, OEM multi-vehicle, good for Chrysler, and then on the backing you can see it's good for Chrysler ATF plus 3, ATF plus 4. ATF plus 4 is the one that I usually look for to put in this transmission. That wraps up the installation of the new transmission lines from Evil Energy on this 1993 Dodge W250. Thanks for watching and I hope this one helps. Stay tuned for the next one. Cheers. So we've gone for a test drive 
and come back. We've checked the rear main seal area, the transmission lines, as well as the oil pan gasket, and there's no leaks from anything, so we can consider this job complete.